Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how to identify different groupings of arthropods that are related to insects but are not actually insects. This is the outline and you can click over there and jump to that section of the video. I'll have the individual orders linked in the description. Um, otherwise, like YouTube will get mad at me because I'll have like 110 annotations and it'll make my computer run slow. But you can go and check the description and click on each of those individually there too as well. Um, we're going to be talking about arachnids, so spiders, scorpions, daddy long legs, mites, ticks. Then we're going to be talking about myriapods, which are your centipedes and millipedes. And then we're going to be talking about uh, the order isopoda or your pill bugs and sawbugs. Everything that we talk about from here on out, so this PowerPoint and then the insect PowerPoint, all of these are arthropods. Arthropoda is a phylum, and it includes things like your crabs, lobsters, spiders, scorpions, pseudoscorpions, mites, ticks, millipedes, centipedes, and sow bugs. And arthropod in Greek just means jointed leg. We're in the subphylum Chilicerata, and identification for Chilicerata includes things like chilicerate mouthparts, which are these pincer-like mouthparts, two body segments, four pairs of legs, and no antennae. Chilicerata includes things like arachnids, which include your scorpions, spiders, ticks, mites, etc., etc. Chilicerata also includes these weird things called sea spiders, which look kind of like crabs, but aren't actually related to crabs at all. And then there's a the horseshoe crab, which is part of Chilicerata but isn't related to crabs at all either. And then you have an extinct group called the sea scorpions that also would have been in this group. Now we're in the grouping Arachnida, which in Greek just means spider and it includes spiders, scorpions, pseudoscorpions, steady long legs, mites, ticks, sun scorpions, and whip scorpions. We're not going to talk very much about the sun spider because it lives like way out in west and in the middle of the desert and you're unlikely to come across one and we're also not going to talk about the whip scorpion because it's, unless you're really really lucky in florida you're not going to see them they're mainly a tropical species but you should just know that they exist and they're particularly charismatic if you're interested in some mythology arachnida comes from the name arachne and that's because there was Athena and Arachne, and Arachne was this really, really great, amazing spinner weaver. And people of the town would say that Arachne rivaled Athena in her ability to make beautiful tapestries. And of course, Athena was not particularly happy being compared to a mortal. And so she came down, and Arachne and Athena had a weaving duel to the death. Kind of, but not really. So anyway, they had a big weaving tool, and Athena made this really beautiful tapestry about all the beautiful things that the gods did for the people and all the, like, the things that the gods did and gave to the mortals and how amazing and wonderful they were. And Arachne had the bright idea to make a tapestry about how awful the gods were and particularly pointed out things that Athena had done that were particularly not good. And, of course, Athena was not all too flattered by... Arachne's tapestry, even though it was really well woven, and so Athena got really mad and turned Arachne into a spider, and so that way Arachne could weave forever, and everyone would be terrified of her because she looked really ugly. The end. This next group is a subclass called Akari, and they used to be their own order, but now it's been elevated up to a subclass, so they found that ticks and mites aren't actually as related as they were as people once thought they were and some mites are really related and some aren't and there's been those like taxonomic things that we were talking about before anyway that's what happened to this group it used to be an order and now it's been elevated and a whole bunch of these mites and ticks have broken off into their own orders mites and ticks are mainly ectoparasitic and so that's why you'll find them on you and your dog and stuff for ticks it's only the females that suck your blood because they're gaining the blood to provide protein so they can make eggs. For chiggers, for example, that's their nymphal stage and they bite you to gain enough protein to develop the rest of the way. Chiggers are particularly unfortunate because not only when they bite you, you get itchy, but they actually can't use our blood so they die. So you're itchy and they die and it's kind of a lose-lose situation for everybody. Some mites are what we call phoretic and that just means they 
use other animals strictly for transportation and that's it and they'll just like latch on and just like move around that way a lot of insects actually get mites too and they're pretty easy to tell if you pick up an insect and they have all these like little red dots on them then they have mites a lot of times with the beetles if you look between the thorax and the abdomen you can see mites like hanging around in the fuzz up there and so it's pretty interesting that you like pick up an insect and it has ectoparasites on it some mites and ticks are kind of tricky because in their nymphal stages they'll only have six legs and so you might pick it up and think that it's an insect but check for three body segments because if there aren't three body segments it's definitely not an insect here we are at araneae which is an order and it's your order of spiders uh, characteristics are that they have spinnerets and they have a constricted waist and that's mainly just due to evolutionary pressure so that way especially your orb weaving or web spinning spiders they can bend their abdomen all around and like shoot out silk and even though not all spiders build webs to capture prey all do have the ability to spin silk so a lot of them use it to just balloon when they're young when they're like baby spiders and need to go off and venture into the big wide world they'll send up a little bit of silk and that's called ballooning um things like your tarantulas and like jumping spiders and stuff that are ambush predators will line their nest with silk and so they have somewhere like nice and cozy to stay i suppose so even though some spiders don't use their webs to catch prey all of them do have the ability to spin silk and it is still really helpful for them Tarantulas can make really great classroom pets. They're pretty low maintenance, so you only have to make sure that they have water and feed them crickets one, about once a week. If you do get a tarantula, you'll want to get a Chilean rosehair tarantula because they're the most docile and the most easily handleable. And you can get one when they're pretty young and just like make sure that you handle it so it's used to being handled. We've had one in the insect zoo for at least the past five years and it definitely hasn't bitten anyone yet. And we bring it out to all sorts of crazy events and let little children handle it all the time. And it, it hasn't been a problem ever. So get a Chilean rosehair tarantula. Make sure you get a female because females are bigger and they live up to 20 years, whereas males only live up to five. And if you don't want it anymore, it's really easy to sell to someone. So really, really great pets, tarantulas for the classroom. The next order is Opeliones, or the Harvestmen, and or Daddy Longlegs. If you use the common name Daddy Longlegs, just realize that there's a lot of things that have the common name Daddy Longlegs. For example, there's a cellar spider, and then there's these guys, and then there's the crane flies. So if you say Daddy Longlegs to someone, then and they kind of like, then they might be thinking of a different group. The characteristics of these guys are that they have long, spindly legs, and they're seemingly one-segmented. The ones in the tropics look really really weird but they have the same characteristics and especially those long spindle legs just give them straight away there's this myth that teddy long legs are the most venomous thing on the planet and then but they can't hurt you because their fangs are too short to break through your skin it is true that their fangs are too short to break through your skin but it is not true that they're venomous because none of them have venom glands and the ones in North America are mainly decomposers and or scavengers, but there are some predaceous ones that will run after things if they have to in other places in the world. But it doesn't matter where you are, none of them have venom glands, so you will definitely never be bitten by one ever. Sometimes if you pick them up, they'll stink up your hand, but that's, that's about it. The next order is Scorpiones, and this contains your scorpions. Fortunately, this is one where the scientific name and the common name are actually pretty similar, and so it shouldn't be too much trouble to remember it. And their characteristics are that they just have these really long claws and these like really big stinging tails. Some cool facts about them is that uh, meerkats often eat scorpions in the desert because they're a high protein source, but the elder meerkats actually have to teach the younger meerkats how to disarm the tail of the scorpion, and so there's a whole like learning aspect there. And scorpions also glow under black light, so if you ever want to collect any, a great way to do it is to go out at night with a black light flashlight and just like shine around, and you'll see like this kind of bluish green glowing stuff in the distance. If you want to keep your really cool scorpion and have it glow for people, you're going to have to keep it alive. Because if you pin it or store it in alcohol and then shine UV light on it, it'll actually degrade the proteins after a certain, certain amount of time and then they'll lose their glowing abilities pretty quickly if they're dead. 
Scorpions can be brought into the classroom too, although you'll probably not want to let people handle them for obvious reasons. Although they're really cool to have around and they're really easy to take care of. Once again, you just feed them crickets about once a week and then you just make sure that they have water and everything's set to go. They glow under a UV light, as I mentioned earlier, which is always a cool thing to talk about. And when females give birth, they'll actually carry the baby scorpions around on their back and there are all these like little white baby scorpions like clinging onto the mom and it's really cute. The next order is Pseudoscorpiones, and, which are the, the Pseudoscorpions, which just means false scorpion. Their characteristics are that they have no stinger, they're, and they're really little, but they have like the scorpion-like claws. Oftentimes, my professor was telling me that since you know a little bit about insects, people call you up all the time. They're like, so yeah, my friend found some of these weird things in her bathroom. Could you identify them for us? And it's because people think that they're crabs because they, they're small and they kind of look like it. And you oftentimes find them in your bathroom. Um, these aren't crabs. Crabs are a type of louse, which is an insect. These guys are interacted. But you'll sometimes get funny calls and they're always just like, my friend found these things. And we've made it out of the arachnids, and now we're in the subphylum Myriapoda, which in Greek just means many foot or many leg. It contains the millipedes and centipedes, go figure, the things that have lots of legs. And the characteristics are that they have a long body with lots of legs attached. So we're first going to talk about millipedes, which are in the class Diplopoda, which just means double foot, and that's because one of their characteristics are that for each segment you have two pairs of legs attached to it. And that's how you can tell them from centipedes. Also, millipedes are decomposers, and so they're, like, really slow, and they, like, curl up into a ball and are like, ah, don't eat me. Some of them are brightly colored because they can have a cyanide toxin in them, and some of them glow in the dark, and that's because they're nocturnal, and this glowing in the dark is telling predators at night, hey, don't eat me, I'm packing cyanide. That's not going to be good for you. The next group is Chylopoda, or the centipedes, and their characteristic is that they're long also, but that they ha only have one pair of legs per segment. Centipedes are also generally a lot faster than millipedes because they're predaceous, and their first pair of legs have actually like moved up and become a modified mouth part, and so they inject venom through these hollow modified legs. You'll sometimes hear people talk about this, like, legged wonder that they find in their bathtubs that scares them a lot, and that's just the house centipede. They're really, really, really great to have around, so please encourage your friends and or family to not squish them because they actually eat cockroaches and spiders and other things that you don't like in your house. If you're really that afraid of them, you can gently put them outside because they'll keep critters away from your house that you otherwise wouldn't want there, so... Please don't squish them, they're really helpful. And they also can't bite you. They can't even hurt you, that's the best part. And the next group that we're going to talk about is in the subphylum Crustacea and the order Isopoda, which is super cool because isopods are your pill bugs or sow bugs, it just means same foot in Greek. But what's really cool is that since they're crustaceans, they still have gills, and so if you flip them over, you can actually see where the gills are on them. And they're really great to have as pets or do different experiments on in a classroom because they have like really specific specific behaviors so if you like pull them out and shine a light on them they'll all like curl up into a ball make sure you get the pill bugs for that one because sow bugs can't curl into a ball but pill bugs can um and their characteristics are that they have seven pairs of legs and you can see their gills this concludes our segment on arthropods that are related to insects but aren't actually insects I hope that you found it a little bit helpful and that it kind of clarified some of these other mysterious creepy crawlers that people think you should know about and their phylogenetic placement.